This episode is brought to you by Syntech. More about them later in the show. On today's episode of On Deck, I'm going to talk about the games that I've been playing this week, the Steam Deck's availability in Japan, and there was an issue with EA's launcher for some games on SteamOS, but it's been fixed and those games are now playable. Valve also recently released a patch for Steam Input that offers more features such as mode shifts and better controller support, and I've got some deals on deck to share with you as well. So if that sounds good, let's get started. Okay, so this week I have to admit, I've been playing Division 2 on the Steam Deck, but most of my gaming time this week has been on my Xbox and my PlayStation. Now the games that I've been playing are also available on PC as well, so I figured I would also talk about them here. First up is Hi-Fi Rush. I did a live stream on Thursday and that game is something special. I spoke to some community members that have played it on deck and they've all said that it runs great. If you haven't played it, it's a beautiful action rhythm game where you play as this guy with a robot magnetic arm and an iPod built into his chest. The entire game world moves to the beat of the music, and enemies attack to the beat of the music, as do you. Now what's cool about this, other than the bonkers art direction, is that your attacks always land on the beat of the music, but if you press the button at just the right time, you can build up the ability to do bonus damage. If you dodge to the beat of the music, you'll dodge farther. If you jump to the beat of the music, you will jump higher. As the game progresses, you'll also gain other traversal abilities and using them to the beat of the music is incredibly satisfying. I find myself tapping along with my feet on the ground as I'm playing the game. The combo system that's built into the game revolves around hitting attacks on beat or skipping beats. You have light attacks as well as heavy attacks, and you can buy combos with the points that you collect. The entire system is pretty complicated, but it's also really awesome. I don't see myself unlocking every single attack as I don't think I'd be able to keep them all straight in my head, but I definitely think I will find certain ones that work best for me that I could memorize. Now, most of the time, games that have combat like this turn me into a button masher, but because it's a rhythm game, I feel like this game might actually break me of that habit. The game feels great, the voice acting is top notch, and the animation is some of the best that I have ever seen. I know it's January, but I feel like this game is a lock for best art direction this year. It is absolutely gorgeous. And if that's not enough, you also get partnered with a robot cat, and yes, you can pet the cat. Now you might ask why I'm not playing this on deck. Well, it's included with Game Pass and I've already paid for it once essentially, so I figured why bother paying for it again? But Microsoft, come on, get Game Pass on the Steam Deck already. I guarantee you would have a ton of people sign up for Game Pass right away. The other game that I've been playing is Dead Space. I'm super early on and I'm playing it on the PS5. I really wanted to play this on deck, but I saw an article over at The Verge that said that the game kind of runs like garbage on the Steam Deck, so I decided to pick it up on the PS5. Hey everybody, I was in the middle of editing this episode and it turns out that Pierre Lou was able to update Proton in order to get Dead Space working better on the Steam Deck. This is supposed to fix a map issue that was happening as well as performance issues where the game's usage of variable rate shading was being completely ignored. The update will be automatically queued within a few hours, so by the time you see this, it's probably already been fixed and you don't have to do anything at all. I do have to say that this makes me consider whether or not I'd like to return the game that I bought on PlayStation so that I can rebuy it on Steam Deck. If for no other reason, then that would give me access to Gyro. But this is the kind of game that I feel like I'd really much rather play on the big screen. And if I'm playing it on my Steam Deck and I get too scared, I'm likely to chuck that thing across the room. So I think I'm gonna play it safe and just stick with the PlayStation version. But it's awesome that the game is now working on the Steam Deck much better than it was when I started making this episode. All right, back to a, a younger and uh, less informed Bill. One thing that's driving me crazy about this game is the fact that the game does not support gyro. I know on the Steam Deck, I could just force the game to support gyro, but on the PlayStation 5, you can't do that. But I also saw this article about how the game is using all the other parts of the DualSense 5, so I had to play it there. It's really too bad that the game isn't supported on the Steam Deck, but if you still really want to play it on the Steam Deck and you have a decent computer, you can probably just pick it up, 
play it on your computer and stream it to the Steam Deck either using Moonlight or Steam Link. I don't normally play a lot of horror games, but I've been interested in this one for a while. It's super scary and I'm terrified to walk into rooms. It's going to take me ages to actually finish this game, but that's okay. I will say the graphics are great and I absolutely love how the UI of the game is not on top of the game world, but part of the game world. I know, it's Dead Space, you guys have all played this game and the sequels and everything like that. I never played Dead Space, so it's all new to me. I'm sure that I'll have more to say about this game later on, but for now, I have to say the EA did a really good job. Speaking of EA, a whole bunch of EA games just got verified as playable, verified as playable, just got marked as playable on the Steam Deck. The issue with most of these games was EA's launcher, which had issues with Proton, but Proton Experimental works just fine. This was posted over at Gaming on Linux. So essentially Valve went through and set all of these games to automatically launch with Proton Experimental, that way you don't have to do it yourself. By the way, you didn't have to wait for Valve to do this, you could have done it all on your own. If you launch a game on SteamOS and it doesn't work, don't give up, there could be other versions of Proton that will launch the game just fine and it's super easy to do that. Just go to the gear menu, go to properties, then compatibility, and change the version of Proton that you're using. If you can't get it to work, try out GE Proton. I've got a video about how to use GE Proton linked in the description. By the way, this episode is brought to you by Syntec. Syntec is dedicated to electronic accessories with extraordinary design, high performance, and quality since 2017. They reached out and asked me to tell you about their new Steam Deck dock. The Syntec 6-in-1 Steam Deck dock has three USB 3.0 ports, HDMI 2.0, and USB-C power pass-through, and it has gigabit ethernet. It's really small and is shaped like a hockey puck. They also have right-angle USB-C adapters, which actually come in a two-pack. They have silicone cover for the Steam Deck, thumbstick caps, and a hard shell travel case that looks like luggage. So, if you're looking for Steam Deck accessories or accessories for your other electronics, make sure to check out Syntec using the link in the description. Support the channel by supporting the sponsors of this channel, and a big thank you to Syntec for sponsoring this episode. For those of you that use EmuDeck, this popped up on their Discord recently. Apparently, GitHub broke the updaters for a bunch of apps, including EmuDeck. Essentially, if you opened it, the app would get stuck in a loop, but it's already fixed, so all you'll have to do is re-download it if you're running into this issue. And don't worry, all of your configurations and ROMs will still be there if you have to reinstall. So if you're running into issues with EmuDeck, that should get you up and running again. I mean, it might be fixed by the time you see this, but as of this recording, it's broken. If you don't know what EmuDeck is, it's essentially a script that downloads all of the relevant emulators for you and configures them to work on the Steam Deck. Then it uses Steam ROM Manager in order to take care of all the front end stuff. It's really awesome. I've used both EmuDeck and RetroDeck, and they do things slightly different, but I think they both do a really good job. If you want to know how to set up EmuDeck, I've got a video linked in the description. Also, speaking of emulation, I made a video about how I turned my arcade cabinet into a Steam Deck. Let's talk about availability of the Steam Deck. Valve recently partnered with Komodo to bring Steam Deck to Japan, as well as other countries in the region. And it looks like they've sold out of the 64 gigabyte version. This comes to us from a translation from the Fox. For those of you that don't know, The Fox has been on this show before. He has a YouTube channel all about handheld PC gaming, so make sure that you check out his channel. There's a link in the description. Anyway, the translation reads, beginning today, customers are being offered immediate availability for all three Steam Deck models in all four regions with one exception. Reservations are still employed for the 64 gigabyte Steam Deck model in Japan, where it is backordered at this time. Now this doesn't really tell us much about Steam Deck sales over in Japan, but it's significant because PC gaming isn't really popular over in Japan, but handheld gaming is huge over there. And over there, Nintendo is absolutely the king of the hill. Now you might assume that the 64 gigabyte model is the most popular SKU in Japan, but I'm not so sure. You see, when Valve initially opened pre-orders, they were surprised that the most expensive version was was the most popular, and I wonder if Valve assumed that that would be the case in other regions as well, 
and ended up shipping fewer of the 64 gigabyte model to Komodo. This would explain why there's a queue for getting that skew of the device. Of course, it could also be that more people are ordering the cheapest one because they plan on replacing the M.2 drive with a larger one on their own, or maybe they just don't want to invest too much into PC gaming as they aren't super used to it. By the way, if you're looking to replace the M.2 drive in your Steam Deck, there's a link to a terabyte one in the description. But either way, I'm happy that the deck is doing well in Japan. It's an important market for gaming, and I know Nintendo likes to pretend to put its head in the sand and ignore everything else, but the Switch is getting long in the tooth, and Nintendo is actually increasing production of the current system which is kind of nuts. I mean, the Switch is nearly seven years old at this point, and the hardware was limited back in 2016 when it launched. Clearly, Nintendo feels pretty secure in its position as the handheld leader, and they absolutely should. But I like that Valve and PC gaming is nibbling at their heels, or at least attempting to. By the way, I have not asked you guys this in a really long time. Which Steam Deck SKU are you using? I personally have the 512 version, as that's the one that Valve sent me. But my son has the 256 version. Which one are you using, and have you done any upgrades to it? Let's take a look at patch notes. We got a bunch of updates to Steam input on the beta channel. First off, Valve added upper grips as an option for mode shifts. Before we get into this, I kind of wish that in Steam input and on the back of the Steam Deck, they called them upper grips and lower grips instead of uh, L4, L5, R4, and R5, because I never remember which one is 4 and which one is 5, and so every time that I'm making a new layout for my Steam Deck, I have to flip the thing over and see which button is which. I never remember, and that is frustrating. Now, I have to admit, I don't really use mode shifts all that much. They're awesome, but I don't use them a lot. This is the perfect use for them, though. For those of you that don't know, mode shifts allow you to set a certain button to change other inputs based on when you press that button. For instance, I can have gyro always on when I'm playing a game, but if I aim down sights, I can change the sensitivity of gyro by setting a mode shift to my gyro whenever I use the left trigger. You can also set your right trackpad to be a mouse look in game, but when you press a grip button, it'll replace that mouse look with a virtual menu. It's a great way to add more inputs to a game if you're feeling constrained by the controls of a game that was meant for mouse and keyboard. Speaking of mode shifts, this next one is an awesome update. I bet there's a lot of people that don't know that you can have different layouts based on which controller you're using. So you can have a layout for the Steam Deck and then a different layout if you're using, let's say, a DualShock controller with your Steam Deck when it's docked. Well, you won't have access to grip buttons on that controller, so it would be confusing to see those as an option. Now, Steam is going to exclude buttons that aren't on the controller that you are currently configuring when you're setting up mode shifts, and I think that that's awesome. I also have to say that I love that Valve is doing so much to support controllers that they don't make. In fact, in the rest of the patch notes, we have tons of fixes for other controllers. For instance, the Nintendo Switch SL and SR buttons will now show up as bumpers for single Joy-Cons or grip buttons for a Joy-Con pair. So if you're using a pair of Joy-Cons and you don't have them in the Joy-Con grip, you now have four more buttons that you can access. And because they're grip buttons, you can use them for mode shifts, giving you tons of new ways to interact with Switch controllers on your Steam Deck. Now, if you're not in the beta channel, you might be wondering, when do we get these new features? Well, Valve recently said that they were going to slow down the cadence of stable channel releases. And the last one that we got was on December 28th. And as I'm sitting here recording this, that's about a month ago. So I'm betting that we'll probably see an update sometime soon to the stable channel. All right, let's move on to Deals on Deck. We've got another Humble Bundle, and this time it's a bunch of survival games. I had quite a few of you mention to me that Chernobyl Light is a great game that's on sale 50% off on Steam right now, but that's still more expensive than picking up this bundle. The other games in the bundle are Scum, State of Decay 2, The Long Dark, which I played a bit of on the Steam Deck. There's also Volcanoids and Surround Dead, 
as well as Star Sand. If you pick up the bundle, you'll get all seven of these games for 15 bucks. Full disclosure, I am a humble partner, so if you're buying these bundles using the link in the description, you are directly supporting the channel. So thanks to all of you that use my links, either for bundles or things like Humble Choice. You guys are awesome. And speaking of people that are awesome, my patrons as well as channel members are awesome. I really do appreciate the support. And don't forget to support Syntec for sponsoring this episode. From the Nerd Nest, I'm Bill. Stay rad, everyone.